In this video, we will solve example 2.3. In example 2.3, you're given a graph of position versus time with six labeled points on the graph, and then you're asked questions about the velocity at those six points. You're asked to state whether the velocity is positive, negative, or zero. So to start off, let's first reproduce the figure from the example. So to answer this question about the velocity at each of these points, what we're going to have to do in each case is try to ignore what the value of x is at each of these points, but pay attention to what the slope of this graph is at each of those points. So this is not a graph of a straight line. It's a graph of a line that's straight in places and it's curved in places. What we're going to be doing in each of these places is we are going to be examining the tangent to the curve at each of these points. So if we were considering a point like that one, I might draw the tangent to the curve, the straight line that just kisses it at that point, like that. If I had a curve that curved upward like this, and a point here, I would draw the tangent this way. Now, if these were graphs of position versus time, as we see over at the left, then what we would have over here is a graph where the slope is negative. In other words, position goes down as time increases. That is an example of a slope that is negative. Over here, the slope is positive. The position increases with time. The rise over the run is positive. So I would say here the velocity is zero. And then we can have the case where the velocity is zero. And that can happen in a couple of different ways. It could be that the position just isn't changing with time for a long period of time, or maybe the velocity is zero only for an instant. I would draw the tangents in this case looking like this. So there's a flat tangent, and then here's a flat tangent as well. And in both of these cases, the velocity is going to be equal to zero. So if we apply what we've just talked about over here on the right side of the screen, then if I go in and draw these tangents at points A through F, well, the first tangent I'm going to draw in is at point A, and we can say it's pretty easy to draw in because A is flat at that point. At point B, the tangent's going to look like this. At point C, it would look like that. At point D, at the bottom it would look like that. At point E it would be going up. The position's going up with time, so the tangent is going to be going in an upward direction as well. And the same thing is true at point F. So now we're ready to answer questions about what the velocity would be at each of those points. So over here at point A, the tangent is flat, so that's going to be an example of a velocity being equal to zero. At point B, the tangent is sloping downward. The rise over the run is negative. That means that the velocity is going to be negative. At point C, that is still the case. That is still the case at point C, so I'm going to say that the velocity is negative there. At point D, at the bottom of this curve, the tangent is flat again. That means that the rise over the run, the slope is zero, and so the velocity is zero. And the slope of the curve at E, now we're climbing, that indicates a positive slope. And the same thing is true at point F. We have a positive slope there. So that is how we solve example 2.3.